Hello, I'm Loredana and today I will show you an example of a smart contract written in Solidity. I have recently started building decentralized apps with Ethereum and wanted to share some insights about the process. In this video, I will just go through the code I wrote in Solidity and understand what's happening. In later videos, I will show you some existing options for development and testing smart contracts and apps. In short, the idea for the contract came from a spreadsheet that I use to keep track of my time on certain projects or tasks, and I usually have a deadline and an actual sum of money that gets put aside if I go beyond the deadline. I wanted to have a more automated way of doing that. So we have a contract named OnTrack that knows about the client, a provider of a service, a third-party observer, and the deadline. The function that's called when the contract is first created is the one that has the same name as the contract, or if you have an unnamed function, that will be used as a fallback. To simplify things, I made the client be the same as the contract creator. So we got rid of one input value. The deadline is the standard time in milliseconds from 1970. And then we get the blockchain addresses of the provider and observer. I have three public functions, completed, which can only be called by the provider after he completes the project. We do this by adding a modifier, only provider, defined here. We have the confirm function, which can only be called by the client to confirm that the project was fulfilled, and a request funds function, which can be called by any of them in case the other did not keep his end of the deal. I opted for a request funds function because I haven't found a Solidity API to directly schedule actions inside the contract. There is one project, Ethereum Alarm Clock, that does just that, but I wanted to keep it simple. Throughout the code you will see a couple of events like this one, which are defined here. They are a good way to log what's happening in the contract, and they can also be watched through the Web3.js API in your web application. We also have some internal functions, like calling an observer or handling payment. The observer is called in case the client and provider do not agree. It returns a Boolean value that tells us whether the project was fulfilled or not. I have made some diagrams for the on-track contract here. This is a flow diagram that helps understand the process a bit better, and you can also use it to see if you have cases that are not covered. So, when we create a contract, the ether value gets sent from the client to the contract, and we initialize the status variable with zero. Status can be zero, one, two, three, or four. If the provider completes the project before the deadline, status is 1. If the client confirms, status will be 2, and we call the payup function. This function pays the provider if the status is 2 and the client otherwise. We will have a status of 4 afterwards. So what happens if the deadline passes and the project is not completed? or the client doesn't confirm the contract fulfillment. The contract keeps the money unless someone calls request funds. Then we check the status. If the contract was already solved before, so the status is 3 or 4, then we throw away the transaction and end it. If the status is 0 or 2, the payup function is called because everything is clear. 2 means the contract is fulfilled, and 0 means that the provider never declared the project as completed. If the status is 1, the observer gets, gets notified, and he returns true if, if the project is fulfilled. So status will be modified to 2, and the provider gets paid. If he returns false, the status will be 3 because we want to mark that the contract has been observed. 
the payup function is called and the client will receive the funds. And that's it. We can now think about extending the contract to support multi-signatures from both client and provider and make the provider also pay some ether upfront in case he does not keep his end of the deal. And we can also pay the observer something for his work. Now I have tested this with two observers that return either always true or always false. But instead of a synchronous automatic answer, we can also have a human observer contract. And we can modify the on-track contract to wait for the observer's answer. In the next video, we will see how to set up some tools in order to test this contract. Thank you for watching and do check out my other demos.